Hi, I'm Shan. This is Shani Reads. Today I'm doing my um, March wrap up part one because in the set for the second half of March I'm doing a sequel a thon, so that can be a separate kind of wrap up. And also, I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got six books here, and they were all great. And I felt like I was on such a good roll of readings. So they're all four or five star books that I've read um, so far this March. So I kind of want to talk about them all together as this just big positive books are amazing <laughs> wrap up. So I'm going to go through them the order I read them because I kind of feel that they a little bit led on from each other. So the first one I read in March was um, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I know like everyone's reading this book at the moment and I've pretty much just seen positive things about it but if you if you are that person that hated it then uh, I'd be interested to know why or you know what you thought. So this one um, is about a fictional band in the 60s and 70s and it's just like a, they're, but they're looking back it's like an um, oral uh, history of them and they're kind of looking back kind of from present day back at the 70s and kind of talking about um, what happened in this time period. Um, so it's got a little bit of, it doesn't really talk about present day, but I guess it's got a little bit of present day sensibilities about it. Um, and a bit of, yeah, just that kind of maybe slight nostalgia about looking back at that time when they're in this massive band. It's um, essentially about, mainly about Daisy Jones and then also the main car main singer of the band, what was it? Oh, Billy. And then it's told just from all the different characters in the band, uh, Billy's wife, kind of, yeah, anyone that was involved, maybe like the manager or stuff like that. <laughs> I, as I said, that I wasn't sure from the manager, but you know, just lots of different people. And it's just all interviews with them. I thought, so I gave this four out of stars, I, four, four out of five stars. I didn't give it five, um, Bert did, and I didn't quite have that feeling of being completely in love with it and completely swept away with it which I know that a lot of people have done. I did think though that it's done really really well so it, that kind of technique um, really carries it through, it kind of really compelling, really easy to read but then even though it's sort of easy and it's kind of a little bit frothy as well or quite light read I just thought it's so cleverly done like she's done such a good job of doing it um, and also she was so, <laughs> it was so clever in that thing of you begin to believe that it's a real band. It feels so real that Bert was saying he wanted to look up the songs. But he, there was one bit for me where they're describing the album cover, and I just got my phone to check what the album cover looked like. Um, so it, you just complete, you do just get completely, yeah. This there is this band. This is <laughs> this is real. Um, it's meant to be. It's sort of a little bit inspired by uh, Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac. And there's one bit in here where they uh, talk about singing together, which. Um, uh, but found the vid a video of Stevie Mac singing, um, Stevie Mac, <laughs> Stevie Nicks, uh, which is kind of really similar to what she's talking about in here, which I will link because it's so good. It's like Stevie just gets fierce. Um, yeah, so it's got all of that going on. There's also stuff about um, addiction. So uh, Daisy Jones is kind of quite pill popping doing loads of cocaine and then the uh, Billy who's the main singer he's got like a bit of an issue with um, alcohol and also with drugs as well and he's trying to uh, remain sober so it did kind of whereas I felt that the the kind of stuff about drugs and kind of made yeah it was sort of quite light all of that even so um, the bit about Billy and his addiction I was just really kind of willing him to stay sober throughout and there's this bit there's a scene kind of towards the end in a bar that both me and Bert said really stayed with us and I thought that was really done as well well done as well so I kind of whereas initially I thought this is kind of quite light it's not going to stay with me it's actually become quite you know lots of parts of it lots of scenes in it are really kind of clear in my mind really have, have stayed with me um and at the end I was kind of getting slightly oh okay you know going along carrying on reading it but then at the end I did have a little tear <laughs> not that anything particular happened but I did yeah there was I did a little cry at the end there is a bit towards the end as well which isn't really spoiling anything but there's a bit of a reveal um twist would feel like too strong a word so it's not yeah there's you find out something and 
I didn't enjoy that. Bert said he was fine with it, but I felt it wasn't necessary. And I kind of felt that it would have been stronger without that reveal. I didn't, I wasn't as into that kind of bit. But overall, four or five stars, really great read, really fun, but, you know, just clever as well. Um, and I think a lot of people would like it. I think most people would like it. Maybe have a go. And then after I've been reading this one, and I was talking, there's a little bit about kind of addiction in there, which kind of led me to reading this one, which is The Recovering, Intoxication and Its Aftermath by Leslie Jameson. Um, this is a really big book, so it's like a good, it's almost 500 pages. And there's a big chunk of um, biography and notes at the back as well. This was amazing. Um, it's I gave it five stars. Um, also, I kind of never want to read it again because I did find it a little bit hard going. It wasn't like out and out bleak, but by the end, I was felt a little bit overwhelmed by it all. So it's nonfiction and it's about Leslie Jameson um, and her alcohol dependency. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like a, an addiction recovery memoir from her. But then interspersed with that, she talks about um, creative people, um, write, lots of them are writers, and about their addictions or their alcoholism. So she talks about Raymond Carver, and there's Dennis Johnson, David Foster Wallace, William Burroughs. Um, she also, oh, Jean Priest. She also talks about Billie Holiday as well. And you kind of, um, and lots about Charles Jackson in The Lost Weekend. Um, so that's all really, you know, if you love reading, which obviously you do, um, that's all really interesting as well. And then, and also, you know, if you've, it might make you think of the Olivia Lang book. And it does, it does have kind of elements of that, but it's very much um, just talking about different, it's not going as in depth to each person as the Olivia Lang one did. Um, and I think overall, it's just much more um, kind of researched and just much more there's much more depth to it than the Olivia Lang one so we've got her story we've got the writer's story and then on top of that she also talks about race and um, drugs and addiction and about Nixon and the kind of the war on drugs and how that was a war on um, black people and how you know that the media or especially him at that time media makes us feel that um, black people are uh, you know drug dealers whereas actually it's mainly white people who are and all that kind of stuff and it was just so fascinating and then also on that as well she's kind of talking about the the liter the literature or of recovery memoir so she talks about things like being just another recovery memoir um yeah i think that's everything it's it's there's a lot in it it's super smart i thought it was amazing her writing was great as well and it just feels just feels like she spent you know a lot of time a lot of research but then it also has that personal story in as well it just really works on so many levels and I think you could come at it you know you could just be interested in reading about other writers or you could just be interested in reading kind of the more kind of po political side to it I just it was so good <laughs> it was it was it was great so and then after reading that one, I kind of felt like I needed a little bit of a break from kind of maybe such heavy stuff, which is why I picked up this one, which is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. And this is a young adult novel. It's a young adult zombie novel that's set um, just after the Civil War. So it's like historical zombie. Um, I, while I read quite a bit of young adult and quite a bit of young adult fantasy, I'm often disappointed by them <laughs> or I, they start off good and then by the end, I've had enough there's a slight bit like that in this one in that I it started off and I thought this is I was really really into it towards the end it gets like really plotty and I slightly got you know I slightly had enough of it but I gave it four or five stars so it was still pretty great um so yeah there's this main character who's a black girl and she has been sent to this school where they train to be like assassins to kill the um zombies who protect kill the zombies and protect the white families so it's very much obviously kind of in this era as well about race um and i'm not sure what the zombies are at the moment i'm not sure 
what they re- if they represent something but said maybe i was overthinking it but there's a bit where you, they talk about just after the civil war then these zombies or they call them shamblers started to appear and then they're killing them but you don't find out any there's no um yeah you don't find any information about why they are there and i kind of felt that maybe there was there were there was something about the zombies as well perhaps it'll come up i know that there's a follow-up um but yeah this was great so it's you know it's fantasy but also lots about race as well and i really really enjoyed it and then after that one i read permission by saskia vogel this is the one it's the bdsm book set in la um that uh, said that if joan didion wrote bdsm this would be it um i really like this one too i love the writing um the writing was great I feel like the story is almost, the plot is almost quite slight. There's not huge amounts going on, but I think it's one that I'd quite like to read again. And also, it's one of those ones, because nothing's particularly explained, it's not like a really clear story arc that it kind of would really stay with you. It's got these great characters. I really liked the main character. She's called Echo, and she's her father just has just died at the beginning of the book, and it's about kind of coming to terms with that. And then... Um, falling for this woman who is a dominatrix and kind of getting involved in that um yeah this was really great i think i give it four i tagged a bit and it doesn't seem like it's like super remarkable but this bit just stayed with me so um let me tell you it it said in the shower i scrubbed and scrubbed my skin scrubbed away the sweat mine and his sweat from the seat of the cop car i scrubbed away everything that had touched me I rinsed away the musk of bleeding, all that I was shedding. She reached through the curtain and touched my lips. My mouth opened, water rained in. I don't know, but I really like the water raining in. Yes, it was great. Then as like a little bit of light relief, I read Aquacorn Cove, five stars, of course. This is by Katie O'Neill, she's a genius. This is about um, this girl who goes to stay with her auntie her auntie is pretty butch oh there she is um and okay um she goes to say that auntie her mother has died and her and her dad go to stay with her auntie who lives near the sea and there's been like this big storm um, and they're kind of clearing up but then she also finds these aquacorns and it's kind of about you know looking after animals looking after the sea there's like a little bit of magic as well i was going to find you the picture of one of the baby aquacorns in a jar because it is just so cute. I loved it. It was wonderful. And then this one, which is uh, The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. Gave this one five stars. Um, I loved this as well. It's non-fiction. She's um, writing about the breakdown of her marriage. Um, her and her husband split up. And then she goes to her and her two daughters go and live in quite a, quite a small flat and it's about trying to write there and um she borrows a shed from someone and it's it's about writing but then it kind of goes off in different directions it's just really beautifully done she's such an amazing writer and i must read some of her fiction i haven't read any of her fiction all i've read is this one and the previous memoir things i don't want to know um, I just really, it was just such a pleasure to read, like smart, but yeah, kind of quite easy to read at the same time and just beautiful. So that's that. And yeah, I just felt like what a great few weeks of reading. It's not often, I don't, I don't think that that happens, but there they are. They're all the books that I've read so far this March. I love them all. Um, Yes. I think my favourite would be perhaps The Cost of Living and Recovering. I thought Recovering was pretty amazing, so they would be the ones that I would recommend, but actually just read all of them because they were all great. Um, I will see you soon. I'm going to read some sequels until I see you next time.